Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to build your own live video streaming server using FreeBSD. So a few months ago I wrote this tutorial for opensource.com called Create Your Own Video Streaming Server with Linux. You see in the subtitle I said you can also set it up on BSD. In this tutorial I want to focus on our beast friend. So first thing you, you need in this tutorial is FreeBSD. You could install this on Metal, you could install this on a virtual box, whatever you want to install it on, that would be fine. In my case, I'm going to be running it in a jail on my free NAS server. So in your case, you might want to jump over to freebsd.org and download one of the newest releases, which are, as of this video, 12 and 11.2. In my case, my jail is running 11.2. Either should work, so feel free to follow along with whatever build you would like. Okay, so first, what we need to do is jump back here to our server. Okay, so first things first, this is a basically a default FreeBSD install. The only changes I've made was I enabled SSH so I can remote into it for this tutorial. I also installed Nano because I'm a heretic and I don't want to edit my config files with VI. Everything else is pretty much standard run-of-the-mill BSD. Okay, so first thing we're going to need is we need what's called Nginx. Nginx is going to be our web server that's going to run our live video server. So you could install it via the package management system. However, since we need a special third-party module called RTMP, we need to install it via the ports tree. So the ports tree, or the ports collection, is a is a pretty great and powerful system built into BSD-like operating systems that lets you customize the installation of common software. Like I said before, packages are great, but sometimes you need to make some special changes for your environment. So the quickest way and the easiest way to get your ports tree updated is to run the command port snap auto. Okay, so what this is going to do is reach out to the FreeBSD mirrors and pull down all the possible ports that you can install on your system. So this process, depending on your internet connection, might take a minute. So using the magic of technology, I'm going to fast forward. Okay, and we're back. So as you saw, there are lots and lots of possible ports that get set up in the ports directory. Now, if you want to view this ports collection, Type in cd for change directory. We're going to go to the usr slash ports directory. All right, now if you type in ls, you can list and see all the different categories of ports that are available for install. In our case, we want nginx, which is a web server. So that can be found in the www directory. So cd www. Okay, and now we want to cd nginx, as you can see. Okay, so now if you ls while in that nginx directory, you should see a handful of files. These are the make files and the other important pieces that FreeBSD needs to know how to build nginx on your device. Okay, so from here, all you have to run is make install clean. And press enter. Okay, so that will now prompt us with this dialog box here where it's going to have us choose specific configurations and modules that we want to install alongside Nginx. In our case, we want to scroll down, should be alphabetical here for modules, until we find, well, I guess not, because there's some stream in there, okay? We're going to go down here until you find RTMP. That is RTMP. And there it is. Okay. Use the space bar to select it, and press enter. Okay, now it's going to prompt us one more time for any other configurations. Everything looks good. Press enter again. So now it's going to go out, basically take our configuration we want, uh, and start building and compiling our uh, Nginx web server. So this process, again, depending on how beefy your machine is, might take a couple minutes. So just hang tight. Okay, and it is 
done. So before we start Engine X, we need to do a few more things. So if you jump over to my GitHub, which I will put a link in the description, I have a real quick basic set of files here that can serve as a good default template. So if you want to download these guys using wgit or whatever tool you want, or if you just want to jump on here and follow along and basically just type these in, you're also welcome to. So I'm going to jump back here because I already have these copied on my box here in a folder called beast. All right. So you need the three files. We have our index file, which is our actual web page, uh, nginx.conf, which is our nginx configuration file, and a picture file called poster.png, which I will explain here shortly. Uh, first things first, how about we set up our nginx configuration? So what we're going to want to do is we want to move this file, nginx.conf, which is just mv space, you know, nginx.conf, but we want to copy it to slash usr slash local slash etsy slash nginx. Press enter. Okay. Now what that did was that moved that file into that directory. What we actually did there was we actually overwrote the default nginx.conf file that nginx ships whenever you first install it. All right, so how about we jump in there and take a look at that file. So let's go to cd slash usr slash local slash etsy slash nginx. Okay, type in ls, you're gonna see a handful of files on there, but the one we're most concerned about is that nginx.conf file. Let's use nano to edit that file. nano nginx.conf. All right, up at the top here, you'll see that it's loading some of those modules that we had to configure when we installed our port here. Scrolling down, and you get to our RTMP configuration. This is important. This is actually what accepts our video stream from our streaming client and tells it what to basically do with our stream. A little bit farther down here, and you're going to see we have this application.live section. This is important. This is basically the section that tells our RTMP module, basically what to do with the stream once it has it. Uh, in our case, it's going to be using HLS to basically break our video up into chunks and create a, an index file, which our video player is going to basically play and make sense of. Um, by default, if we didn't have this section, you could still play your stream, but you would need an RTMP uh, compatible player like VLC. Um, if you look here, we have a HLS path. This is important because this is basically where it's going to store our video. By default, Nginx will not have the ability to read this HLS directory. So basically, we're going to have to make sure that it has permission to do so. Let's go a little bit farther down here. Into our HTTP section, you'll see I have a location section here where I have root set to, this is our web root, where our website's going to actually be stored. Uh, slash usr slash local slash www slash stream so that is a file that you're going to need to or a folder i'm sorry that you're going to need to make where we're going to basically keep you know our web player so first things first let's make sure we have this hls file created and let's make sure that nginx has the right permissions it needs in order to access that directory so let's use control x to jump out of there Okay, I'm going to clear this so we don't have so much chaos on the screen here. All right. So, first you're going to want to run mkdir, which is make directory, slash mount, slash hls. Okay. I already made that file, so I don't have to run that. But what that's going to do is actually going to make that hls directory for you. Now, you want to change the permissions of it. So, we're going to use the ch own or chone command here www www which is the user in the group that nginx runs under slash mount slash hls okay there we go now nginx has the right permissions it needs to be able to basically read and write to that folder which is very important okay well that's part of it. Now we need to make that stream folder that I mentioned where we're going to keep our actual web player. We're going to do that by, let's clear this out, 
by running the same thing, mkdir, make directory, user, local, www, stream. All right, I already made that folder, so I'm just gonna back up here. Okay, so now that we have our folders made here, we can actually take our index file and drop it in there along with our poster. So I'm going to drop back to where I have it stored. So wherever you have those files stored that you downloaded from the old GitHub there. Okay. We're going to use that MV or move command to move these files into that folder we just made. So move our index and our poster file over to user, local, www, stream. Okay. Awesome. How about we jump into that directory there and take a look, see, at that index file we just copied. All right, we're gonna edit it by running nano index.html. All right, so if you take a look here, it's a pretty simple file. Uh, at the very top, you have your, you know, your basic HTML header, and here we're linking in Video.js. So Video.js is the video framework that we're going to use for our web player. I'm going to jump over here so you can see. Do, 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 do. All right, so this is on Video.js.com. This is on their Getting Started page. And you'll see they have a very basic template, which is basically what I followed here, um, that gets you a very, very simple, basic web player uh, embedded on your um, web page. So as you can see, uh, I'm also using version 7.5.4 as highlighted on um, this tutorial here. So we're going to jump back. So depending on when you watch this video, you may want to check over at the Video.js website to make sure you're using the most current uh, version. And be sure to read any, any of the release notes in case anything has changed since I created this video. If you scroll a bit farther down here, you're going to get to the real meat and potatoes, which is our body, which contains our video. So if you look here in video, we have an ID class where you basically define some of the properties, uh, like the theming of your video. These are all documented really well on the videojs.com website. Your controls, uh, the height and width of your video. You define the poster, which is basically the default thumbnail that your video is going to show, which is that poster file we copied, and you'll see mine here shortly. Now what's most important is below it here. This is the source. This is what your video player is actually going to play. You're not limited to a live stream. This is where you could also put an MP4 or a .mov file, but in our case, we want to play an M3U8 file. Now, taking a look at the entire source here, I have source equals HTTP colon slash slash the IP address of this server that we're on port 8080 I'm not sure if you caught that but basically the way our RTMP server set up here is it's accepting uh, connections on port 8080 that's what it's using to basically grab our stream and play it off of the server um, slash HLS which is the folder we created and this part's important this tech dot m3 u8 tech this can be changed to whatever you want. This could be potato, this could be Bob Ross, this could be whatever the heck you want. All this is is a private key that differentiates your video. So in your video streaming client, in my case OBS, you have to define a private key. Make sure that the key that you're giving OBS matches up with this. Otherwise, when you go to play your video on your web player, it's not going to work. So that's basically a unique identifier that tells you know our web player which video stream you want it to play. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this. The rest of that just closes that up and gives you a warning if you don't have JavaScript, which we do. All right, so we're gonna jump out of here. I'm gonna run clear on this to clear up all this mess. We are now ready to fire up Nginx. So you can run service, Nginx, start. Oh, look at that. It's complaining that we don't have the ability to start it yet. We need to add nginx into the rc.conf file. So the rc.conf file is basically FreeBSD's uh, like first boot file. It tells the system what we want to run at start time. So you can get to that by running nano slash etsy 
slash rc.conf. Okay. We're going to scroll down here to the bottom. Let's make a new section here. We're going to put a pound sign here or a hashtag here. This is just our comment, so you can put whatever you want in here, but I'm going to put enable nginx because that's what we're doing. So this is what's actually important. nginx underscore enable equals quotation yes, all caps. Okay, exit out of here, save that configuration. Let's try running that command again. Service nginx start. Now, if we did everything right in our configuration and there's no misspellings, we should see this. Syntax is okay, test is successful, starting Nginx. We have a running Nginx server. Now, let's jump back to our browser here. We wanna to go to HTTP beast. And there we go, we have our web player. So as you can see, I have the FreeBSD logo as my poster, which seemed fitting for this tutorial. Now, off to my left here, off screen, I have a laptop running Open Broadcast Studio. In the settings, I have it configured to push a stream of my desktop over to our server that we just created. Let's see if it works. And there we go. We have a functioning live video server. Now, if I hover over top of it here, I know you can't see my mouse, but you should see the controls come up here. I have my, my pause and play button my audio control. I have a little indicator here showing that we are indeed live. I can go down here to the right and maximize this guy. So, like I said earlier, you can control, you know, what's on these controls and change the default size of this, but this shows that we do indeed have a functioning video server. All right, this should hopefully get you guys off the ground so you can build your own live video streaming empire. Now, I suggest that you probably use yours like I am and have 10-hour videos of Nick Offerman drinking whiskey by a fireplace, but if you choose to go another route, I will understand. If you found this video helpful, definitely let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos like this or have any other ideas, feel free to let me know. Until then, good luck and happy streaming.